Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. In this video, I'm continuing my ongoing analysis into sort of the foundational concepts in epistemology. Uh, the lecture series is progressing nicely. I'm going to end the discourse on Descartes that we did before, um, and the, the uh, section from Stroud in this book. This is the book that we'll be using. This is Epistemology and Anthology. It's a Blackwell publication. It's, it's, you know, it's one of the better, if not, well, I'd say it's one of the better epistemology texts, especially, especially for uh, an introduction to epistemology. I'll be using that text today as well. Um, so I'm going to start a whole new section. This section is because I'm following along in, in the text. In the text, the first part of the text is on uh, skepticism. So the next few uh, lecture series, maybe the next maybe two or three sections will be from G.E. Moore. And the idea is that we saw initially, I have to do some recap to sort of set the stage for what we're doing in this analysis um, with Moore's sort of demonstration of external reality. What we saw in the last section was that um, Descartes denies, right, the external existence of, of the world only to reconstruct it um, with his mind, right? So. I'll talk about this in, the, in a little bit once I f formally start the, the lecture series. Descartes, though he doesn't say this, contemporary epistemologists and philosophers categorize not only his process, that is the process of methodological skepticism, but they categorize what has been done in Descartes as a mind-dependent reality, right? So that reality becomes mind-dependent. Obviously, Descartes is a rationalist, right? So the external world exist, metaphysically speaking, the external world is, however, our epistemological access to external reality is only itself contingent on the mind. So the conclusion that you have to draw is that external reality is mind dependent. This is what we get from Descartes. What I what I really liked about what Stroud did, Barry Stroud did in his analysis of Descartes was that he really talked about the way, the epistemological way, and I went into great depth in this in the lecture series of the past you know, three, four hours, was how we go about doing this, how Descartes went about doing this, and he talked about um, the role of properties and grouping ideas and, you know, categorizing the, taxon the taxonomic means with which, epistemologically speaking, we organize and categorize our thoughts, our ideas, into um, this hierarchy of knowledge, right? A set that contains more parts, the the primal seliment, seminal elements, which we can identify as properties and the role that properties play with respect to our epistemological accessibility to metaphysical reality, right? So that's what we did in the last section. Um, hopefully, you were able to draw and distill that information. I know what I just said was sort of sort of dense. But the idea is, I've, I, you know, I've spent several hours, um, I spell, spent several hours discussing that and analyzing it. So at this point, you should be comfortable with sort of what I just said, and also the significance that um, Descartes' rationalism has in terms of uh, an epistemological description of a mind-dependent, right, a mind-dependent reality, right. So obviously, methodological skepticism is is a skeptical stance. What we want to do in this section now is we want to prove external reality. And G.E. G. Moore, this is probably one of my, it's very, very brief. It's like maybe two pages, three pages, right? It's very, very brief, but Moore's, and every epistemologist, budding epistemologist should know this argument, right? So it would be a tragedy for me to have a series on epistemology and not include G.E. Moore's uh, proof based on his hands, right? Everybody knows this argument, right? My left hand is my left hand, you know, duh. So we're going to do an epistemological analysis of Moore's canonical argument. The argument seems, if you're not familiar with sort of the logic, and it's a incredible, it's going to prove to be for me uh, an incredible challenge to, to uh, explain this argument because the argument is so dense, but in a paragraph, not even a paragraph, in one sentence, one or two sentences, more lays out the demonstration, and it seems if you aren't versed in epistemology that this is a rather trite and simplistic argument. How could this address Descartes' mind-dependent reality? How, how could this prove to be the case? Well, we'll see, right? So 
Um, that sets the stage for this new section. This new section starts on uh, the top of page 9, and this is going to be from the text GE Moore's Proof of the External World. Uh, and with that, let's begin. Alright, so this is epistemology. And this is section 1.4. Okay. And with that, we begin. Again, section 1.4, G.E. Moore's proof of the external world. So the first thing that I want to do, uh, and this is right at the top, is to read the passage, the demonstration, the proof um, that G.E. Moore gives, and then I'll return to the passage and we'll deconstruct the significance of each section of the passage, and then we'll further deconstruct it, right? We're going to take this one, you know, these two or three sentences, and we're going to really just delve into this very, very, very condensed section um, and make sense of all of the complexities and the demonstrations of proof that in here. What's important, before I go on, and also before I forget, what's important is a recognition that epistemologically speaking, right, especially for new new students, new learners, and rather advanced, I'll, I always try to present the, which is difficult, but I always try to present my lecture series on two levels. On an introductory level for those who sort of have no idea of the understanding of concepts, these concepts specifically, and at a very advanced level. Um, so you might watch this a second time after you've had more more education in epistemology to, to get some of the sort of nuanced, latent points that I'll just address, but I won't, I won't, I won't answer. So let's begin. Um, so this is Moore's response, uh, a response to the skepticism of the external world. There's a skepticism that there is an external world. Moore situates his methodological critique in terms of a defense of the external world. Here is a demonstrative, demonstrative, sorry, here's a demonstrative proof of the existence of the external world. Okay. I can now, for instance, I, I can prove now, for instance, that two human hands exist. How? By holding up my two hands and saying, as I make a certain gesture with the right hand, here is one hand. Here is one hand, and adding, as I make a certain gesture with the left, and here is another. And that's the proof. <laughs> I love more. <laughs> I remember the first time. This is, I, I learned this in, oh, when did I learn this argument? Like maybe, oh, one, oh, two. Uh, and I was like, this is the most ridiculous thing. I didn't get it. I didn't get it at first. And then as I progressed through epistemology, and especially where I'm at now, I was like, wow, this is actually rather genius. So let me just read it again because it's so trite. It's so simple. And you would think, oh, this is ridiculous, right? So I can prove. So Descartes does this whole process of methodological skepticism only to arrive at what would some say a rather unsavory conclusion, which is a mind-dependent external reality, and more undermines all of that with um, this rather, uh, this rather, uh, this rather perplexing uh, proof, right? I can now prove, for instance, that two human hands exist. How? By holding up my two hands and saying, I can make a certain gesture with my right hand, here is one hand, and adding, as I make a certain gesture, with the left, and here is another. And that's it. And that's it. Right? That's and that's it. And this is this is partly why people who don't understand philosophy, they say, oh philosophers, they don't they don't do anything you know serious because they're over here waving their hands, proving external reality. But now let's take a deeper look. Okay. So I have exactly the the section directly beneath that under analysis is exactly the same passage, but I've just added and highlighted some of the key terms which more will further buttress in the article. So it's important that we understand before we get into the very, very precise analytical sort of deconstruction of the passage, that we understand what the key points are. So I can prove now, right, important point. So we'll put analysis of important 